the moment of extraocular muscles, the first thing we need to know is, okay, here is the medial side, you got the nose, and the front, so the eyeball is facing like my own eyeball. The orbital cavity is not straight, and the eyeball is not facing straight like our uh, lights in the car. The medial wall of the orbit is straight. The lateral wall of the orbit is deviated to 45 degrees. And the eyeball is also supposed to be like that, facing around 23 degrees. So all the recti muscle we say are not facing anteriorly, but they are more or less facing sideways. This is about the orbital axis. But if you see the visual axis, because we have a straight vision, our eyeball is supposed to be placed like this. Now look at the muscles. We have a medial rectus and a lateral rectus. These two are very straightforward. The medial rectus pulls the eyeball medially or adduction. The lateral rectus pulls it laterally or abduction. The superior rectus is not straight on the top but he comes from the apex of the orbit and he stays like this. So what happens when the superior rectus contracts he is not really elevating the eyeball instead in a normal position the superior rectus can only adduct the eyeball. You can see this he is just pulling the eyeball like this so he can only adduct or he can rotate the eyeball inside this is called intorsion. But to elevate the eyeball, the eyeball should first turn so that the axis of the eyeball and the axis of the muscle are in same line and then the superior rectus can easily elevate the eyeball. Otherwise, if he wants to elevate, he needs help from another muscle which is called inferior oblique. They both together can elevate the eyeball. So now I repeat, medial rectus, adduction, lateral rectus, abduction, straight forward, superior rectus can do adduction, intorsion or help in elevation, but elevation is effective only when the eyeball is facing outside. This is what we say in clinical testing, if you want to test the superior rectus or isolate the movement of superior rectus. You ask the patient to see outside and then look upwards. It doesn't mean that the superior rectus is going to abduct. We are abducting the eyeball using another muscle and using the superior rectus to elevate the eyeball. A similar arrangement is for superior oblique. He runs on the opposite direction. Now you see when superior oblique contracts, he can abduct the eyeball, if he pulls like this, he can again intorque the eyeball and he can pull the eyeball downwards. But the downward movement is effective only when the axis of the eyeball is in line with the muscle. So now he can effectively pull the eyeball down. That means the superior oblique can abduct, he can intort. He can make the eyeball look down only when the eyeball is facing inside. That's what we say in clinical testing. You ask the patient to see inside or adduct the eyeball and then look down. Thereby we are testing the superior oblique. So if the superior oblique is paralyzed, the patient will not be able to do this, which means he will not be able to see inside and downwards means he has problem in reading the book or walking down the stairs etc. Thanks.